Hello, in a recent video, I repaired an HP 3325A frequency synthesizer signal generator. Dating back from 1979, it is still an impressive function generator to this day, where you can digitally set the frequency with 10 digits of precision. To achieve this feat, the instrument uses a frequency synthesis technique called fractional N synthesis. Fractional N synthesis was first introduced by HP in the previous model of the same instrument and is still the basis for frequency synthesis today. But my frequency generation had gone wonky. I was hoping we'd have to debug it so we'd learn about fractional N synthesis, but the fault ended up being elsewhere in the power supply. However, the principle is way too interesting to ignore. So I'll bring back the elevator music and give a try at explaining it in this bonus material for the dedicated viewer. So PLL phase lock loop. Um, in the simple case, you would use this to copy one frequency, to control one frequency with another. So let's imagine you have a VCO, voltage control oscillator, and which emits a frequency which is controlled by the voltage in we'll call it F2 and on the input side you have a frequency F1 and you want to basically copy the frequency F1 into F2 exactly so F2 has to be close to F1 it has to be within the capture range and so what you would do is put F2 and F1 as the input of a phase detector which in the olden days would just be a, a double balanced mixer which is a simple circuit that gives you either the frequency difference of the two or when they are close to phase it gives you the phase difference which is exactly what we want so it does two things at once so what happens is that let's draw bigger this is f2 and of course f1 is here and let's assume it's a little slower it will not be exactly in there so there will be a phase difference between the two in this case it's increasing and this circuit the phase detector gives you a voltage that's proportional to the phase difference so you go out here and you have the phase error which is a you know, mostly DC you'll put it on a low pass filter and uh, to make it as stable as possible and this is your error signal and you feed it back as the VCO, the voltage control input for your VCO. And what it's going to do is going to you know, quicken up your uh, F2 until it matches F1 exactly and this difference is zero. And then you get F2 copy of F1. So you've controlled F2 by F1. What, what would you do that for the same frequency? It's done often for, for cleanup where you know, this thing is, has lots of phase noise or is, it's, it's a signal that has been received, very noisy. And then you want a clean copy of it, you put a very strong low pass filter so it will take all the noise out and you'll get a very stable clean F2 that's been uh, reformed. But it's even more interesting when you want to control F2 and have it being a multiple or sub-multiple of F1 to change frequency and that's how frequency synthesis works. So I just presented the original analog PLL loop with an analog mixer. Today, and also in our old but at the same time bleeding edge HP instrument, the phase detector is digital, which is actually easier to understand. In a digital PLL, the low pass filter and the VCO are the same analog E things. But both the VCO output and the reference frequency are turned into a digital square wave. Then things become really easy, it just takes a couple digital gates to create a pulse whose width is equal to the time difference 
between the two input rising edges. The result is shown in orange here. Average that over time and you've got the phase error. Easy peasy. And now that you are digital, you can easily insert a PLD or programmable logic divider between the VCO frequency and the digital phase detector. For example, if you program it to divide by 2, the loop will try to match the divided by 2 frequency with the reference frequency. You have now locked the output to exactly twice the reference frequency. In other words, you have synthesized a programmable multiple of the reference frequency. The HP3325 does this in a clever way to achieve small frequency steps and go down to very low frequencies. The reference is a low noise quartz oscillator at 30 MHz, divided down 300 times to a fixed 100 kHz. The VCO is divided by a programmable number n, say 400 in our example. The output is n times 100 kHz, so 40 MHz. It is then mixed back with the reference to yield the difference, or 10 MHz. In this way, the 3325 can produce any frequency between 0 and 20 MHz in steps of 100 kHz by varying n. This is called the n-loop. But we want much smaller steps. That's when the fractional n-loop trick comes in. To achieve an intermediate step, a circuit will knock out a pulse of the VCO frequency once in a while. This is a function of the pulse remover circuit. Depending on how often you remove a pulse, this results in an average division factor that is an arbitrary fraction in between n and n plus 1 and can result in super fine steps. Now there is one more important wrinkle to make this work. If you have been following closely, you have realized that although the average division factor is what we want, the correction takes place all at once every m cycles. During the cycle, a phase error will accumulate, as shown in the sawtooth output of the phase detector. This would try to yank back our VCO to an even n multiple between the corrections and cause an undesirable periodic wobble. In order to get rid of that, the fractional n counter calculates the predicted phase error and uses a D2A circuit to add an approximate opposite sawtooth to the resulting error signal, so it is almost constant. At the end of the cycle, the digital correction takes over and gets it exact. So you now understand there is plenty of exciting PLL circuitry that could go wrong in this instrument. Luckily, my fault ended up being way simpler, just a bad cap in the power supply. But I hope you enjoyed the explanation. For now, my generator is repaired and you'll be able to better appreciate its clever complexity when it makes cameo appearances in future videos. So, so I couldn't resist, I had to hook it up to some uh, some speakers. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go, it wobbles.